2022 was quite an unbelievable year. From the never-ending Partygate saga that saw, saw off uh, a democratically elected prime minister to the cutthroat Tory leadership contest that ended with our third female prime minister who only lasted 44 days before MPs ousted her. A woman who knows a thing or two about having political authority undermined is Chief Officer of Cheshire Association of Local Councils, Jackie Weaver. And she joins me now. Uh, good evening, Jackie. Um, it, it's very nice to have you on the show tonight. So uh, you obviously famously in that Zoom conversation that went viral during lockdown, uh, people were saying you hadn't got authority. Now you have, which is good. What is your verdict, though, on the year that we've just had? Well, I, I think it's been an incredibly disappointing year. I mean, everybody's going to say exactly the same thing. You know, I, I have no reflections um, that are going to be, be startling. I'm just reflecting the things that people people say. What I did think was really interesting in your previous segment um, about New Year's resolutions um, was how two things. One, I think all of our politicians um, offer far too much. They constantly offer what they think the public want to hear. And as a result of that, constantly under-deliver on it. And so our perception of them is that they lie to us. And then you take that to the next stage as well, which is, where's the accountability? And I thought it was really interesting, one of your speakers saying, you know, write to your local mayor, write to your elect elected representative, and call them out on what they said they were going to do. I think that's a really interesting point. Well, it is. And look, and maybe that I think that's been completely magnified by social media, too, because um, people are always trying to do in a way, you know, how can we change the world in one line, you know, on Twitter? And of course, it's very hard to achieve it nowadays. I mean, you from a, a local council point of view and looking at local authority, I mean, some people would say that in a way so few people vote and local elections, though they are coming up, of course, next year, um, you know, really the people that get in, do they have any authority at all? But clearly they have and big budgets and big power. Yeah. And, and I said several times that I feel that communities get the councils they deserve. Um, so, you know, if you are not taking any interest in how a, a small group of men and women are spending your hard earned money, then, you know, what do you want me to do about it? Yes. And it's about kind of making people understand that actually they are spending your money and you can get them to do do something different if you don't think that's the right thing that they should be doing. And I think one of the problems is that people get very frustrated with national government. You know, they, they, they have that perception that they, they really can't influence change. And it makes me smile because, you know, it's kind of like it's, it's put forward as being a perception that you can't affect change. It's not a perception. It's a reality. You know, at home and you're, you know, watching your telly and whatever, no matter how much you shout at that telly, you are going to change nothing. Yeah. But locally, you can make a difference. And you okay. can make a difference in your own lifetime, which is perhaps for people my age, even more important. I mean, you know, luckily for local local councils and local authorities, apart from in your case, because it went viral, of course, because of that great spat we all enjoyed in, in many respects. Um, of course, everyone else, as we discussed earlier on, has this incredible spotlight that they're in the public eye all the time, 24-7 now. And it must be uh, interminable sometimes. H have you ever thought of now, particularly as you've had a bit of spotlight, trying to end up going up to the next level, going up to Westminster? Or, or would you just could not face that? Um, it's not that I could not face it. Um, I, I think what a hypocrite I would be if I if I was to say that. Um, but again, I don't think I would make any difference doing that. I mean, it's one of those things that um, I'm not a um, a party political creature. Um, but in order to to really kind of achieve something at national level, I would have to choose which party, and then you become a party creature. And although hopefully a lot of your aspirations and your um, your personal viewpoints align with that party, some of them won't. And so, in a way, in order to get something done nationally, you have to become somebody different. Can we just remind our viewers of, of the moment in a way that made you famous? Because then I have a question to ask after it. But this was this was the thing that went viral during lockdown that we all kind of enjoyed, I have to be honest. This meeting has not been called according to the law. 
The law has been broken. It has been properly Will you please let the chairman speak? Please. If you disrupt this meeting, I will have to remove you from it. You can't. It's only the chairman who can remove people from a meeting. You have no authority here, Jackie Weaver. No authority at all. She's just kicked him out. I, I, no, she's just kicked him out. Don't, don't. She's kicked him out. Don't. This is a meeting called by two councillors. Illegally. They now elect a chairman. No, they can't because the vice chair's here. I take charge. Uh, Read the standing orders. Read them and understand them. <gasps> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's, the, it's classic. It's like a bad Alan Partridge moment, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, when we watch that and we saw how heated they get, I mean, I guess, is, is that what's happening in Westminster, do you think, as well? But worse. <laughs> Oh, well, a couple of things there. I mean, I, I've kind of done a very similar job, um, albeit in a very changing environment, because town and parish councils have changed a lot over 25 years. But in that 25 years, I've never experienced anybody get that angry ever. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I didn't know people could get that angry. Um, does that happen at national level? Well, if it does, I think that's appalling. I mean, those men, well, one in particular, had absolutely lost control. Yeah. And any adult at that, that moment needs to leave the room. <laughs> uh, I, I hope you don't mind us showing it again, because it is a Thank classic bit of TV, I've got to be honest. Uh, and uh, do you still speak to those people? Uh, did you ever become friends afterwards, after you'd all become internet sensations? <laughs> Um, I, I can't say that we did. Um, I, I did. Um, I was approached by a, a TV program that had a wonderful idea for a TV show, um, which was kind of a, around uh, forgiveness. Um, and although I don't say no to a lot, I kind of felt no. This just this just not would be the right program at all. Um, but I don't. Um, I, I don't feel any animosity to the um, the people concerned or. Um, any time the programme shown, because I think it's done more to raise awareness of town mm. and parish councils than anything else I've been involved with in the last 25 years. So I thank you for that. Jackie, it's been lovely chatting to you and uh, I wish you a very happy new year. Thank you very much and for being on. not too many resolutions. Yeah, well, <laughs> that was Chief Officer of Cheshire Association of Local Councils, the legendary now Jackie Weaver.